appreciate you tuning into this part two of part one uh, of the book of Revelation study. Um, uh, this is, I had to break it up into two parts uh, for uh, reasons as so we can upload it to uh, social media. But so this is part two of still the part one of uh, the first part of uh, the book of Revelation study. Uh, so we're going to pick up here now that we're in part two, and it won't be quite as long, obviously, as part one. But uh, in Revelations 1, chapter 4, verse 6, uh, in part one is, if hopefully you need to listen to it first before you listen to this video, and you'll find it right next to or under the uh, under the under part one, uh, you'll find it under this video, and so you need to watch all of it first, and then you can uh, pick up here in part two, uh, and that will help you stay in the flow of things. But um, I I kind of broke down and gave a preface of uh, context and history and and uh, setting things up uh, for our study for the Book of Revelation, and and so now we're just going to look a little bit at the first uh, few verses of chapter 1 in Revelations. And um, let me, let's read Revelation 1, verse 4 through 6. Uh, John writes, Grace to you and peace from him, God, who is and who was and who is to come, and, and also from the seven spirits that are before God's throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of all kings on earth. So here we see God the Father, uh, God Almighty, is shown as the one true and living eternal one. You know, he lives in a realm without space, time. Uh, he is, he is, he was, and he is to come. He's he's all that in one. Uh, his his li linear space that he looks and can see is from beginning to end. He is, uh, you know, he he was, he is, and he is to come. Uh, all history, all human history, all creation history is part of his predetermined plan and his purpose before the foundations of all creation. And, and so that's so important to understand as not only do we look at the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ, but also in our understanding of life, uh, that uh, that's where it all starts, is our belief, our faith in God the Creator, uh, as the Eternal One who is and was and is to come. It all starts there, friend. Uh, it says in Hebrews 11, without faith in that, without faith in God, it's impossible to please Him. So that's where you start. And, and you have to understand that all history is predetermined. In the book of Acts, uh, when Peter stood up and spoke, he goes, now, according to all the predetermined plan of God, what you're seeing now is happening. You know, God already wrote the script. He's sovereign. I can't say that enough, and, and I hope you believe it deep inside. And then it says in, in Revelations 4 through 6 that, uh, grace to you also from the seven spirits who are before God's throne. Now, you know, the seven spirits that are before his throne or his high place, his place of authority, uh, I cannot say for sure, uh, but, but this could be referring, you know, right off the bat, here's one of those interesting uh, debates over, because, you know, we believe in the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, so what's seven spirits? Well, you know, if you look at Isaiah in the Old Testament, Isaiah 11, chapter 2, here's what you're going to find. You, this is a prophecy 
given concerning Christ. He said, and the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. There are seven spirits. That may be where that comes from. That may be the seven spirits that are before the holy throne of God. Makes sense to me, but, uh, you know, we will know one day for sure, but, but that's what I can come up with at this point. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. Those are all found in Isaiah 11 too. Uh, and, and as we will see in many places throughout the Bible, the number seven has a real specific meaning as do a, a several other numbers like 12 and 40 and 24. Uh, number seven is used so often in the Bible, and it has an overall meaning of completeness. It's, it's, it's complete. It's uh, finished. Um, it's perfection. It's done. You know, this this revelation of Jesus Christ is written to the seven local churches. Uh, the spirits that are before God are seven. God finished all of his work when in creation in Genesis, and he rested on the seventh day. Completed. Everything's completed. Uh, in Genesis, concerning the flood, here's a fascinating thing. We read that after seven days, the waters of the flood came upon the earth. And then at the, when the flood subsided, subsided um, uh, it was seven days between Noah uh, releasing the dove. You know, the number of completeness, fullness, perfection is used so many times. Throughout the Bible, seven loaves of bread, uh, seven candlesticks, seven lampstands. I mean, it's completeness. And, and then finally, as we read in chapter 1, verses 4 through 6, it says Jesus himself is seen in a threefold office that is revealed to us in the following words that we read in in verses um, 4 through 6. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of kings on the earth. So Jesus is seen here in Revelation chapter 1 as, as someone who ha holds three offices. Faithful witness means he, he is the great prophet. Firstborn of the dead means he is the high priest. You know, when he was resurrected, he was resurrected and descended back to the Father and sat at the right hand of the Father, which means a right hand of authority, God's authority. He was given authority. His name was authority over all other authorities. And he became not only our, our, our uh, Savior, not only our Lord, but he then became high priest. You know, we don't, we don't need to go to a priest to confess our sins any longer. We don't need to come to me. You don't need to go to your pastor. You don't need to, you can go to Jesus and, and who is your high priest and he will hear your confessions. Um, so anyway, he's firstborn of the dead, and he's third ruler of kings. In other words, he now is prince over all kings, all authorities on heaven, uh, in the earth, and under the earth, the Bible says. He's it. Today, he's even judge. And again, out of all the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, Jesus alone is the focus of the book of the revelation of Jesus Christ. And finally, let's read, continue to read in Revelations 1, 4 through 6. 
to him, John writes, Jesus, to Jesus, who loves us. <laughs> He's got to establish that fact, that he loves us. And he has freed us from our sins, our injustices, by his blood and made us a kingdom priest to his God and Father, to God be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now, even though there are many things that are kind of hard to understand, and many times in the words of this book of Revelation, uh, you'll find that they will cut deep with conviction concerning our faith in the living God, but yet we'll also find comfort, encouragement, and hope by the fact that Jesus loves us. He disciplines us because he loves us. He chides us because he loves us. He, he directs us, he gets on to us, um, encourages us, speaks truth to us because he loves us. And uh, it's an unconditional love for his church. He is the head of the church. Remember, God is a God of order. And Jesus demonstrated this love he has by shedding his own life blood on a Roman cross for the forgiveness of sin and injustice. And at the same time, he, in turn, this made us citizens of the kingdom of God by our faith in what Christ did on the cross where Jesus reigns as the resurrected Savior and high priest and Lord and judge. And then as a grand climax, Jesus, through his blood that has rescued us from the wrath of God that's coming upon the wicked, Christ has given us the right to be called the children of God, and he has now made us a kingdom of priests. This is the emphasis of the book of Revelation. We are a kingdom. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. We've been translated from darkness to light. We are ambassadors of Christ. We represent Christ. We offer ourselves up as living sacrifices that love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. This is the great and first commandment, Jesus said. And the second is just like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Two commands fulfills the laws of God. The first one reveals the heart of love that would not dare live in a way in front of the world and that would scar the reputation of the God they love. The second, love your neighbor, reveals the heart of love for our fellow man, that we would never do anything that would cause them to stumble or, or suffer injustice. So I'm going to stop here in Revelations 4 through 6. We'll pick up next week in verse 7 uh, in our study of the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's it's going to be a, a, a long one, but... Um, my hope is that you will leave this study uh, convicted, encouraged, and full of hope in the victorious Christ. All right, until next time, dear friends, God bless.